Okay, I'm going to show you now how to make a, a self-registration PowerPoint similar to the ones available on Communication for All that uses motion paths and triggers again. Um, I've got one slide here. When I make them for the website, I put a lot of slides on them because I put instructions on as well. I'm just putting one slide on here. Okay, now I've put a pleasant enough background on it with the fill effects. It's important again when you put in uh, an animation on it to unclick the advanced slide on mouse. Click. Okay. You don't want that to, to advance it. You want it just to work with the, the triggers. So you can see here I've uh, put some bits in here. This is just a line that I've drawn for the stem, sunflower head and some clip art leaves. They were just things that I already had. Uh, and I'm sure you can find similar things. There are some bits of clip art like this on my Postress blog. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to assemble them together. So I'm going to put the sunflower head on the stem. I'm going to put the leaves on the stem here. Just adjust so I'm happy with the way it is. I've made the stem long for a particular reason. You'll see what that is in a minute. And then on top of these, I'm going to add a shape or a text box. Um, I'm going to make it a shape. I'm going to make it a rectangle. I did try this earlier with a circle, but I didn't have room to fit a child's name in. So we're going with a rectangle across the middle of the sunflower, like that. You can write child's name in or I'm just writing child one because that's what I generally put on them and leave people to edit them themselves. I'm going to change that for a more child friendly font that I know that most people will have installed. Not my favourite font but I know people have it installed and I'm also going to make that a little bit smaller because it, about size 14 is fine. I don't like that colour with the sunflower so I'm going to go to Drawing Tools. I'm going to make it a little bit more 3D. Mm, the red isn't bad, but I think I'll go with the orange. And I might do different colours uh, of them later. Now, what is important to do with this is you need to group these to make them one object. So holding the Control key on your keyboard, just click to highlight all the different elements like that and group them. So you've got one element there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this element down here. Okay. And then I'm going to add the effect. So I'm going to highlight it, add effect, and I want a motion path that goes up. But I want to draw it, so I'm going to choose Draw Custom Path and Line. And that's because I want to draw it to make sure I get the height right. And this sometimes takes a few different goes, but they are, that would be about right for me. And that's group 14. And what I do there is like I did before, I'd go to timing and I'd go to triggers and I would start that on group 14. Okay. And then when I view this is a slideshow and I click there it moves up as you can see I didn't make the stem quite long enough I can rectify that if I need to by ungrouping making that longer and then it's simple enough to copy the entire object with the motion path on it and just place it alongside I'm going to change that to child 2 and you can see it automatically will register as another group. So when I view it now, when I press child 1, that one will go up. When I press child 2, that one will go up. And if I click anywhere else, it's not going to move. I'd probably put an action button on it to exit the slide. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these down only because 
they're not quite in the right place and I don't want to waste time adjusting them. I want to show you something else that you can do uh, to make this uh, a better activity. If you go to your um, developer tab you've got lots of different options. If you can't see your developer tab in your ribbon if you click here and go to PowerPoint options you should be able to, to choose to see it. Okay, But I've already got it here and you'll need this more controls option and it gives you all these different things that you can insert and use in your PowerPoint and what I want to use is I want to insert a shockwave flash object so I need to go down 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 find shockwave there it is flash object and I press OK and it allows me then to draw a little shape like this now what I've done is I've put some uh, suitable shockwave flash objects that you might like to incorporate in an activity like this uh, online. So your next stage is to right click this box and go to properties. It's got all these different things here that you don't have to worry about. What you do have to worry about is you need to type in the uh, web address of the shockwave fl uh, flash object or the address if it's st stored on your computer. So this is one that's online that I'm making available to you. So I'm going to put in the web address communication uk, and then a forward slash and it's digital clock dot s w f and that's it and then I'm going to click the X there. When I view this now as a slideshow, and obviously you'll need to be linked to the internet for this to work, this digital clock will come up with the correct time and today's date. You can resize it just like it's a picture, so if it's too big you just make it the size you want. and. Uh, then put it up. If you don't like the digital clock, get rid of where it says digital here and then close. And then when you press play you should have a different thing come up. Oh, let me see. What did I forget there? Properties the forward slash. So let's have a forward slash there. Clock SWF. And hopefully now you'll see a different type of clock which again you can resize and uh, put to fit however you want it to fit. So here we have it. Self-registration with triggers and linking SWF objects into your PowerPoint. Thanks very much for watching.